Sydney Sweeney's having quite the year, and Immaculate is her latest entry. It's got her dressed up as a nun in a remote Italian convent, going about her learning when unsettling things begin to happen. Now, I didn't see the trailer, so I went in blind. But this wasn't the movie that I thought it was going to be. So is that a good or a bad thing? Cecilia is an American nun of devout faith, embarking on a new journey in a remote convent in the picturesque Italian countryside. Cecilia's warm welcome quickly devolves into a nightmare as it becomes clear her new home harbors a sinister secret and unspeakable horrors. So this is very reminiscent of the 1970s Giallo films, where the production utilizes long zooms, and there are all those them slow and innocuous looking shots that have a slightly religious sounding musical score that's playing over them. And then there's a lot of graininess to the visuals. So if you are into this type of older horror genre, I think this is something that you could get behind. Now, the whole aesthetic has a slightly vintage feel to it. Thanks to the remote location of this uber-old convent, there's a gothic undertone that mixes with the horror and then the religious themes. Sweeney plays the fish out of water effectively, barely knowing Italian and being half a world away from her previous life. The convent also immediately sets a discomforting tone because half of it operates as sort of a hospice for elderly sisters. Now, this doesn't get a ton of focus, and it can even sometimes distract from the plot, but portions also allow for interactions that can make the hairs on your neck stand up. And I love that for the majority of this story, it's not scary, just ominous and foreboding with a growing sense of dread. The opening shot establishes something very messed up, but because we lack context, all it does is just add to that threatening atmosphere. Now, like some of the late 70s horrors, not everything gets explanation or even context. Sometimes a character just blacks out, and something has occurred during that lack of consciousness. But we only get to see the aftermath. I mean, it adds intrigue, but I can also see how this lack of info can create some displeasure. Now, the storytelling is quick, and it even skimps a bit on some areas, choosing to tell everything in 89 minutes. Now, I think a couple of horrifying situations could have been exploited longer to draw out some intrigue and mystery. And then some characters, they come into the story and gain prominence, only to disappear for several scenes and then pop back in. I mean, this is a solitary location, and while it is a sprawling convent, I kind of expect to see a couple of the key players more than what we do. And as I'm sure as you can imagine, there are some jump scares in this. They're all predictable, but a couple of them, I know, they're still effective because they're carried out in unexpected ways. Thankfully, also, they're not overused. I mean, there's probably only a handful at most. Two of them, though, genuinely got me. I mean, even though I was totally expecting them. Now, for the majority of the storytelling, this lands more in the subtle thriller genre than horror. But once the horror begins, it's pedaled to the metal to create just sequences that are brutal, grotesque, and squirm-inducing. I mean, more than once, I physically recoiled at what we see. And when blood is called for, this doesn't skimp on it. We are shown bountifully flowing spurts, rather than just a little squirt that is pretty unimpressive. I love how the violence used some techniques from the older horrors as well. It's not quite body horror, but it kind of is. The effects, they're convincing, and all appear to be practical versus CGI. And this adds a whole new level of grossness. I mean, there's one scene that made me gag. There wasn't even any violence being shown. I mean, it was just the visual of this person with a blood-soaked item. Mm, nope, nope, nasty. No, thank you. Now, I think what makes this movie work is the combo of the 70s look and feel with the religiously devout characters. Now, the Catholic Church has long been used as the antagonist in horrors, sometimes rightfully so, but their mystique, their traditions and secrecy all lend themselves to creating eerie or macabre atmospheres. And because this setting is an isolated old convent, the architecture and decorations enhance that distressing sentiment. Now, another element that adds to the creep factor is the sound design. When the lights go out and then all the sisters are sleeping, any movement is amplified throughout the silent hallways. So you got floorboards that creak, doors squeak. I mean, even footfalls sound as if they're echoing throughout the building. And this works to build tension, especially when characters are trying to sneak around. And additionally, scenes are accompanied by religious songs that are sung a cappella by the nuns. And there's just something chilling and beautiful with that sound. It's haunting, and it creates a bunch of dread, despite the comforting intention that originates from those songs. And I think the progression of the story becomes very predictable and obvious once we reach a certain point. There's this minor reveal about halfway through, and then from there, we can see the uneasy tone and the direction that the story is going to take on. 
This isn't necessarily bad or disappointing, but if you're hoping for mystery all the way through, you just don't get it. Now, the final act of the film is an anxious and tense ride. The settings get claustrophobic, and this is when the actions become insane. There was a point when Sweeney is performing an action, and because of the cadence and what was being carried out, all that went through my head was, the power of Christ compels you. <laughs> I mean, it's an inappropriate thought for the scene, but it couldn't be helped. And then, while the violence is captivatingly horrific, the final shot of the movie is probably the most gripping. It's expertly captured in a single take, and it's emotionally and physically brutal, with Sweeney commanding the scene. I and mean, it's the absolutely disturbing exclamation point of the story. And I think the film executed it perfectly. I mean, some visuals could be shown, but the camera shows restraint and then doesn't reveal something to our eyes, which then only enhances what our imaginations can dream up, especially thanks to the things that we had seen earlier in the story, as well as those sound effects that are heard during this climax. And that then makes it all the more effective as a finale. So overall, Immaculate wonderfully embodies the aesthetics, pacing, sound design, and bloodshed of a late 70s giallo film. Sidney Sweeney captivates with her demure and innocent portrayal, creating a sympathetic character exploited in the name of religion. The story is thin in spots, choosing expedience over depth and detail, also relying on jump scares to raise heartbeats. But despite the underdeveloped portions and the predictability, the mounting dread crescendos into a gory splatterfest, complete with an engrossing and emotional single-take finale. There's no sex, some nudity, a little bit of profanity, and then a lot of gruesome and gory violence. I give Immaculate four out of five couches. So do you like the older horrors? Do you have a favorite maybe that you could recommend? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.